Bots are a huge problem in old school RuneScape. As some dude once said, they're taking our jobs, they're taking our money, they're killing us. Oh wait, that wasn't about bots, but the point stands more true here than anywhere else. Bots are everywhere in OSRS, exploiting whatever aspects of the game they can to make the most amount of profit. Not only do bots take away from the fun of social interaction with other players, they take away real players' finite resources like mining spots, trees, and alcoholic beverages. They're so prevalent that entire channels and events are rightly dedicated to the busting of these automated pests. Our overarching goal for this project is to automate that process. We're going to harness the power of some simple machine learning algorithms along with a popular botting client to create our own bot that identifies other bots and reports them to Jagex. As you'll see later on, this process will be much easier and more effective if we manage to get access to the kind of data that Jagex would either have or be able to acquire. So if you enjoy this video or even just the concept, please like it and share it and maybe one day Jagex will find out and we'll be able to change the OSRS landscape entirely. Since last time, we've received some feedback to go into a little more detail and make this project into a series as well. However, I'll still do my best to keep the information presented as short and sweet as possible in each and every video to keep your attention spans with us. If you'd like to be part of these discussions, involved in future projects, or have any questions at all, join the Discord. Link is in the description below. Just to be clear, the scope of this video is just to present the idea and to talk about the data collection portions. Now, data collection isn't the sexiest part of any ML project, but it is undoubtedly one of the most, if not the most important pieces of the puzzle. Anyone working in the ML or AI field will be able to tell you that bad data leads to bad results. And also that data collection and pre-processing take up at least 60% of each ML project in today's modern world with so much unfiltered and unstructured data. There are so many complexities from dealing with the acquisition and handling of data that we'll explore here today as well in our niche domain, Old School RuneScape. Alright, without further ado, let's get into how we went about gathering the information we needed to identify bots in OSRS. We first thought of image processing techniques like we had used previously with Bill Nye AI. However, there are so many complications with these techniques. Image processing is reliant on the pixels present on the screen, and that means a slight shift in color, angle, or even rotation would greatly affect the accuracy of these algorithms. And that happens all the time if the camera moves or if interactables look different in other parts of the RuneScape world. Now, don't get me wrong, it's completely possible, but it would require a ton of data, labeling and training just to try and solve the problem. And you know, that's just to attempt collecting data. This made me really worried in the past because without a way to easily and accurately collect data, my RuneScape ML projects would either take months or just be straight up shit, right? However, right after releasing my first video, I learned about the power of botting clients. Have you ever wondered how bots in OSRS really work? If there's such a huge problem with image processing, there's no way these bots or these people who create bots could use it without running into like a million hurdles, especially in the early days of programming. Furthermore, the bots that I've seen need so much data about the world around them, like where they can walk, where are the mining spots, or where are the banks to truly perform the actions they set out to do. So as you can tell, this is all very complex and an incredibly large endeavor. So how did they do it? Well, I've learned that there are three types of bots in OSRS, as well as in many other games. The first is the color bot, which is essentially what we've been talking about uh, with image processing. It's essentially, I mean, it essentially sees the screen the way we'd see it and processes information in that way. It's easily tricked and easily detected as well, since it has to be pretty specific with its actions. The next is a more complex type of bot. It's called the injection bot. As the name implies, it injects itself into your OSRS client and reads the code that comes your way. This allows a much greater deal of complexity in botting with all the data that it's able to read and evaluate but it's also much less likely to be tricked with a simple color change. Here, they'd have to modify the code itself to change the outcome of your bots. However, there are still issues with these kind of bots that'll get you banned. Jagex found out that they can insert fake pieces of the code that they can send over to everyone's clients, which aren't meant to be read by most players. These injection bots, however, will have to read everything as they don't know what to, you know, what is worth avoiding. This exposes them to Jagex and therefore will be flagged and, you know, most likely banned thereafter. 
The last type of bot is very similar to the ejection bot and it's called the reflection bot. It takes things one step further and reflects or mirrors your client in its own fake client. This way it reads the same code that comes your way but can choose to keep only the information that's relevant to you. It still reads the fake traps that Jagex has left but doesn't pass on the information to you so you're not caught. All they pass on is the actions that you need to take for your bot. So the botting client that I've chosen to work with is called DreamBot. It's a reflection bot client and it's insanely well documented. Just to be clear, I don't in any way condone botting. I'm trying to ban them for God's sake. However, this was most definitely the easiest and most accurate way of gathering data that I could find or think of. So now that we know how we will go about collecting the data, let's talk about the structure of the project and the video series as a whole. The first part is data collection. We'll use the DreamBot to take the data from OSRS and give that over to our Python server to store the data and more importantly, run all the data analytics for us to produce a well-trained model for our bot or not bot classification in the future. Once we have gathered enough data and we have a model trained, our DreamBot will send over the same data it has always sent and the Python server will receive the data, parse it, and classify the player to send back a bot or not bot message. If the player is identified as probably a bot, the DreamBot client will right click and report the fella. So before I get into the scripts themselves, I'd love to give a huge shout out to one of our Discord peeps, So We Go On, who worked alongside me to brainstorm and develop quite a few key functions. All right, it's time to dive into the nitty gritty details of how we did this with both Java and Python. As with most things Java, we have a lot of necessary imports and useful functions that we never heard of, but do not be afraid. Like I said, they are really well documented and very self-explanatory. Once again, the overall idea is to gather as much information as we can about each player. So first, we can simply get all the names of the players nearby. Then we loop through each player on our list. For each and every player, we first check to see if they have already if we have already seen this person before, just in case they've changed worlds or something and we don't want duplicates, right? Next, we see if the player is animating because they could just be waiting to mine or completely standing still and doing nothing. After 30 seconds, if they don't do anything, we skip them as well. This is to allow us to gather the animation ID of each player, which would be negative one if they aren't animating. Initially, I had assumed it would also allow us to get the pickaxe of the player if they had it in their inventory since I thought it was reliant more on the visual aspects for grabbing the gear info. But I believe that assumption was false now. Hence, I might take this chunk of code out entirely next time if the, anim if the animation ID proves to not be very indicative of botting. Anyway, once the player animates, we collect and put together the animation ID of the player, the tile they're on, and their equipment into one long string separated by line breaks. Finally, we send a GET request to the high scores API to acquire data about their skill levels. I just have to say, this was so much harder in Java than the three lines of code that it would be in Python. Anyway, a lot of the time, this may come back as null because the high scores API just may not have the data on the player. This can happen for a few reasons, such as the player's levels are too low or the player is just newly formed. Anyway, once all the data is gathered, we add the high scores data to our long string and ship that off to our Python server through sockets. So sockets are essentially a two-way communication link between two programs on your computer. We have code to set this up on both the Java end and the Python end, uh, as you'll see shortly. For our purposes, this is the fastest way that I know to transfer data from the DreamBot client to our running Python script that acts as a server. So as you may have noticed, there are a few things we took into consideration as well to make the most out of our data gathering bot like world hopping and walking about which we'll go over in more detail in the following section as we test our DreamBot client. However, there are a lot more details I won't go over for the sake of time and in these specific functions, either in our code or in the documentation. And if you're interested, I highly suggest checking it out. Links to both will be in the description below. Now, once the data is received on the Python server end, we simply break down the strings into individual parts that are separated by a line break, and we save them in an array. Some of the parts have to be converted into arrays themselves, since that's how they were sent over. 
Then we simply create a CSV if one doesn't yet exist and append to the CSV if our, uh, with our array of data if we already have one. We end up with this beautiful set of raw data in a CSV format that we can use for feature extraction and predictive modeling. We can already see some things that might be useful features to detect bots like how many items they have equipped or are their levels focused purely on one skill? This gathered data is also available via the links below and I wholeheartedly welcome you to play around as well. Anyway, now that you understand how it works behind the scenes, let's see our little monster in action. To begin using our data gathering bot, we simply start the Python server, open up DreamBot, start the botting script, and bam! We see that our server has received the connection, and our bot is in data collection mode. Our first victim is unfortunately one of the many who doesn't show up on high scores. However, our very next is one that does, and we can see how quickly data is transferred through the sockets, right into the arms of our Python server. There, a new, player's, the new player data CSV file was created since there wasn't one already today, and then a new line was added. In this case, it's the data of Mr. or Mrs. Rainbow Dash 2. That pretty much covers the main functionality of our data collection, but of course, there were plenty of scenarios that we needed to consider, such as, you know, a bot would go into a loop and never stop if a player never animates. Right, and that's why we had to wait for 30 seconds before just giving up on the player entirely, as shown here. Also, notice that, you know, if data is received by the Python server, it sends a received by Python server string in return. This just shows that the Python server can send any kind of string back through the socket immediately and that will be super important for our report bot in the near future because our Python server will be allowed to send either a bot or not bot message back to the dream bot for further action on its end. Later on here, we can see another consideration which was what if we run out of players to observe? which we can expect to happen quite a bit, right? And we switch worlds to another random free-to-play world that isn't PvP or related to any special event. We do this also while making sure to change, uh, to not change worlds too often as it will be a sign of world hopping and set off some red flags for Jagex. We also walk around every now and again to avoid logging out, but uh, just one step to either the right or the left of the player's current position. Finally, we have a condition to close the program if we've gathered enough data. Staying signed in for too long is a telltale sign of a bot since most humans need rest. Anyway, we let this program run for quite a bit and it slowly but surely gets us the data that we're after. Whenever we feel satisfied, we can stop the script on the DreamBot end. The Python server will stop right after. Then we can call it a day. We can easily see how this would be much simpler and more effective with better data like with what Jagex has. Imagine if we had players walking path history, mouse movements, or even information about whether they'd responded to random events or anti-micro events like the sandwich lady. However, we just don't expect that to happen so soon and we're gonna at least try to prove our worth. Right? The first course of action is to gather lots of information from different places like other common botting areas, but also with non-botting areas like Lumbridge or the Grand Exchange. In order for a good classification, we need lots of examples of both bot and non-bot players. In the next video, we're going to go into feature engineering. We'll make up some features like what we've hinted at previously with number of skills that they're focused on or the number of items equipped. Then we'll select features as well based on those that perform the best. However, to know if they perform well or not, we first have to label all the data ourselves. We're most likely going to have to look through each sample and label it as bot or not bot with our 200 IQ knowledge of OSRS. This is probably where I'll need the most help. So if you think you know what, you know, what is the most likely indicators of bots and how to judge them, please let me know in the comments or join us on Discord. Thinking about it now, this is actually where data from Jagex may be the most important because they might have historical data on who they decided to ban or not to ban, which would immediately give us like a huge data set of labeled examples to learn or train on. What comes after is choosing the best classification algorithms along with the highest performing hyperparameters for the job. There are tons out there, but it's a very well studied field and I'm pretty sure that we'll stumble upon many great options to choose from. Other than that, I think there are code improvements and optimizations all over the place. And 
Even doing this video, I see how much better it could have all been, but such is life in a fast-paced world of prototyping. However, I'm open to any feedback and I will absolutely fix anything that I think is essential if you point it out. Once that's all done, we're going to make our data gathering bot report the players that they deem as bots. This has already been worked on by So We Go On, or at least the reporting part has been, and he went through quite a few considerations there as well. And we'll go into all of these details soon, so subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned. So that's all folks, thank you for joining us on this journey of experimental discovery. My dream here is to have Jagex see this and respond to the viability of the solution, so please share this video around if you ever get the chance. One day, we'll make our mark on RuneScape history. Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!